What a magnificent and incomparable book the Bible is. We are so blessed to have God's word preserved down through the centuries, translated into many languages. The Bible is without comparison. It is a book of great statements, great prophecies, great poetry, great declarations, great narratives. And within the word of God, we just find these great one-liners. We just find a single verse or even part of a verse where what is said there can be transforming. And one great verse is Romans 5, verse 8. Romans 5, 8 is without a doubt one of the great good news statements in the Bible. Romans 5, verse 8 says this, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is one of the great salvation texts in the Word of God. This is one of the clearest declarations of the gospel that Jesus Christ came down from heaven because God loved us that much and he came down and didn't just live a good life didn't just give some moral teachings and then ascend to heaven no Jesus actually went all the way to the cross the Bible says here Romans 5 8 that Christ died for us there is a lot in those four words Christ is the one Christ is the Messiah he was the long-awaited deliverer for the Jewish people he was the one that people were waiting for, the one prophesied in books like the Psalms and Isaiah and Jeremiah. And Jesus is the one who came down. Only Christ can save. Then the second word, died. Christ died for us. Why did that have to happen? Why couldn't Jesus just show us the way and then return to heaven and then not be a, a sacrifice on the cross? Because death is the only thing that pays for sin. If you or I go to a foreign country and we want to buy something, we just cannot use any old currency. We have to use the currency that is acceptable there. If we go to Japan, we've got to use yen. If we go to the United States, we need to take some American dollars with us. And God only accepts death as the payment for sin because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then that key word for is so important because Christ died for us. That speaks of substitution, that Jesus Christ died on the cross as a substitute for other people so that the wrath of God was transferred. In fact, the Bible says that God made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us. And that's what happened on the cross. God treated Jesus as if he had sinned. And so the judgment that I deserved and you deserve for our sin was transferred onto Jesus Christ. And then we are given Christ's righteousness. It's an amazing exchange. It's life changing. It's eternity changing. Christ died for us. He loved us that much that he was willing to be the sacrificial lamb. And then the pronoun us. Now, there's a couple of things that are true at the same time here. Paul could write to the Galatians that the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. So the individual person who comes and receives forgiveness through Jesus Christ can honestly say with their hand on their heart, I know it to be absolutely true, Jesus died for me. So there is a sense where he died for individuals. Here, Paul writes to you know, house churches in the city of Rome and tells them Christ died for us because we need to have a bigger perspective that Jesus was purchasing a whole body of people. He was redeeming people, Jews, Gentiles, people from different cultures, different backgrounds, different ages, men, women, children. He was just redeeming people, anyone who would come through the doorway of faith. So Christ died for us. There needs to be that sense of, yeah, he's, he's purchased the whole Christian church and we can link arms together and say hallelujah. In the West, we tend to be individualistic, but let's think broader than that. He died for us. What a great text is Romans chapter five, verse eight. It's important for us who know Jesus to understand it. And anyone watching this who's not yet a Christian, I encourage you, come to Jesus Christ for salvation. Come guilty, come needy, come with empty hands, come unable to save yourself and say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross in my place and I'm trusting in you to save me. I'm trusting in you to be my personal savior. He won't let you down. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're promised. Romans 10 verse 13. Trust in him today and he will save your soul for all eternity.